Blood pressure is affected by several factors. Peripheral resistance, vessel elasticity, blood volume, and cardiac output. Your goals for learning are to understand the factors that affect peripheral resistance and therefore blood pressure. To understand how vessel elasticity, blood volume, and cardiac output affect blood pressure. Here's what you need to know. The anatomy of blood vessel walls and the factors that affect cardiac output. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. One of the main factors that affects blood pressure is peripheral resistance. Blood cells and plasma encounter resistance when they contact blood vessel walls. If resistance increases, then more pressure is needed to keep the blood moving. There are three main sources of peripheral resistance, vessel diameter, blood viscosity, and total vessel length. We will explore these sources of resistance in more detail on the following screens. Let's look at how vessel diameter affects peripheral resistance. As the diameter of a tube, such as a blood vessel or a hose, gets smaller, a greater proportion of the fluid is in contact with the wall of the tube. Therefore, resistance to flow is increased and pressure rises. We can use garden hoses to demonstrate this principle. Click the faucets to see the effect of diameter on pressure. In a similar fashion, constriction of blood vessels raises blood pressure. Vessel diameter is actively regulated by vasomotor fibers, sympathetic nerve fibers that innervate the vessel's smooth muscle layer. Vasomotor fibers release norepinephrine, a powerful vasoconstrictor. A vasoconstrictor is a substance that causes blood vessels to constrict. Click on the nerve to see its effect on blood vessel diameter and blood pressure. Blood vessel diameter is also regulated by vasoconstrictors carried in the blood. Click on each eyedropper to see the effect of these vasoconstrictors.
Besides vessel diameter, blood viscosity also affects peripheral resistance. Viscosity is related to the thickness of a fluid. The greater the viscosity, the less easily molecules slide past one another, and the more difficult it is to get the fluid moving and keep it moving. Because of this greater resistance to flow, more pressure is required to pump the same volume of a viscous fluid. The hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells in the total blood volume. The hematocrit affects blood viscosity and therefore resistance to flow. The more viscous the blood, the greater resistance it encounters and the higher the blood pressure. The hematocrit can increase as a result of either more red blood cells or less plasma in the blood. Conversely, the hematocrit can decrease because of either fewer red blood cells or more plasma. Click each button to increase or decrease viscosity. Note that removing fluid would also increase viscosity. Watch the blood pressure gauge to see the effect of increased viscosity on blood pressure. In addition to vessel diameter and blood viscosity, total blood vessel length also affects peripheral resistance. Increased fatty tissue requires more blood vessels to service it and therefore adds to the total blood vessel length in the body. The longer the total vessel length, the greater the resistance the blood encounters in the vessels and the greater the blood pressure. Click on the skin to see the effect of vessel length on blood pressure. Besides peripheral resistance, blood vessel elasticity also affects blood pressure. A healthy elastic artery expands, absorbing the shock of systolic pressure. The elastic recoil of the vessel then maintains the continued flow of blood during diastole. In the disease of arteriosclerosis, arteries become calcified and rigid, and so they cannot expand when the pulse wave of systolic pressure passes through them. Thus, the artery walls experience higher pressures and become weaker and weaker. In addition to peripheral resistance and vessel elasticity, blood volume affects blood pressure. If there is a greater volume of fluid in a tube, such as a blood vessel or a hose, then more fluid is pressing against the walls, and so the walls experience greater pressure. Conversely, with less volume, there is less pressure against the walls. 
Once again, we can use garden hoses to demonstrate this principle. Click the faucets to see how volume affects pressure. Click each picture to see the effect of blood volume on blood pressure. Reduced blood volume, which could be due to excessive sweating for instance, reduces blood pressure. However, this is only a short-term situation since long-term homeostatic mechanisms compensate, bringing blood volume and blood pressure back up to normal levels. Increased blood volume increases blood pressure. Water retention from excessive salt intake is one way that blood volume can be increased. Again, this is only a temporary situation since long-term mechanisms bring blood volume and blood pressure back down to normal levels. So far, we have looked at how peripheral resistance, vessel elasticity, and blood volume affect blood pressure. Cardiac output also has a direct effect on blood pressure. Anything that decreases cardiac output also decreases blood pressure because there is less pressure on the vessel walls. Conversely, an increase in cardiac output results in increased blood pressure. Recall that cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Thus, anything that affects heart rate and or stroke volume affects cardiac output and thus blood pressure. On this screen, we will explore the effect of heart rate on blood pressure. What do you think will happen to heart rate and blood pressure with greater vagus stimulation? Click each button to check your answers. On this screen, we will look at the effect of stroke volume on blood pressure. If less blood is ejected from the heart with each beat, then blood pressure will be lower because there will be less blood pressing against the vessel walls, and vice versa. Obviously, blood volume directly affects end diastolic volume and therefore stroke volume. Click each button to see the effect of stroke volume on blood pressure. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Increases in peripheral resistance, blood volume, and or cardiac output result in higher blood pressure. Conversely, decreases in any of these factors lead to lower blood pressure. There are three main sources of peripheral resistance, blood vessel diameter, blood viscosity, and total blood vessel length. If arteries lose their elasticity, blood pressure increases. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.